let us start by discussing what the goal of a data driven pipeline is. A traditional workflow to get a subsurface model from raw data looks something like this. It has a sequence of different steps, each of them requiring over months of time, and the entire process requires more than a year of time. The goal of a data driven pipeline is to find a function f directly mapping raw data to the subsurface model. We hope to leverage deep learning technologies in order to find this function f. If we are able to get an accurate function f, the training this function f will only be a matter of weeks and using it to infer the subsurface model from the raw data would only be a matter of minutes. Hence, the data driven pipeline can bring down the timeline, general timeline of, line of over an year, just a timeline of only minutes. This is the potential that a data driven pipeline holds. Unfortunately, we are nowhere near this goal yet. However, in this talk, we discuss some progress that we have made in this direction. So let us first look at what current research on seismic inversion looks like. Most of the current research on seismic inversion can not really be extended to real applications or real seismic data. And this limitations basically stems from two things. First, they, they consider the seismic data as an image data and try to apply a convolution based network in order to process it. An illustration of how convolutions work is shown in this video. As you can see, a filter or a matrix, a weight matrix, spans the entire image in all the dimensions and computes this local features from each of its location. If this image was a 3D image, you would see this 3D filter cube to, uh, spanning the image in all the three dimensions. If it was a higher dimensional image, then the, then the cube would have to span each of this dimension. As you can see, in order to apply such a such a, a filter across the image, you need to have a uniform geometry around each of these pixels. However, if you look at the real data, and let, let's say we focus on a smaller area of real data, it looks something like this on the figure on the right above. Uh, the, the small dots in this image are basically the locations for shorts. And the corresponding colored lines are basically the receiver lines for this particular shot. As you can see that this data is nowhere regular. It does not share a highly structured, uh, structured geometry. And secondly, if you move this window around, you would probably see varying acquisition geometries in the window. And even the number of traces might vary. Secondly, if you look at a single trace, it, you can clearly see that it's at least five dimensional data. Two, dimensions per source and receiver and one dimensions for trace. So the problem is that first of all, seismic data are not images. And if you want to characterize the, them as images, it would probably be suboptimal. Secondly, even if they were images, applying five dimensional convolutions to large scale data like, like seismic, it would be computationally not feasible. So it's not really a surprise that none of the current research has been applied successfully to real data. So the key takeaway here is that raw seismic data is not an image and should not be processed as one. So let's think about what kind, what kind of a similar, similar problems have we solved in literature. And what we realized in the process is that seismic inversion problem is really, you can look at it as you can cast it as a machine translation problem. So imagine seismic inversion as a problem from a language of raw traces to a language of velocity model or subsurface model. So let us look at this machine translation task in NLP and how it is solved and then relate it back to seismic inversion. So machine translation task in NLP is basically to take an, a big document as an input and translate it into another language. So produce a document in another language. Now, if you think about finding a single function f, which can map from document one to document two, it is probably going to be a computationally hard problem. So the way the state of the art results are achieved in machine translation is by defining an auxiliary problem. That is a problem of producing just a single word by looking at its context. For example, in order to produce a word discipline, you would probably look at the context around the word discipline. Once you have this function f for the auxiliary task, which is much smaller in scale, you can use this function f to generate the entire document on the right one word at a time by, by, uh, 
by moving this win blue window over the entire input document. And we find similar kind of a decomposition even in the seismic inversion task. So the auxiliary task proposed by SESD is that you divide this velocity cube into different levels. And at, in each level, you further divide it into different cubes. For each level, we propose to learn a different model. And in order to predict a single velocity cube uh, on the left, you would basically be only look at the context around that particular velocity cube. For example, in, in the figure on the right, if you want to predict the velocity cube which is in the red, you would only look at the set of the traces that, that uh, lie inside a relevant acquisition area around this particular block. Now, once we have this context and you want to predict, predict a small velocity block, how do we design the architecture for this model? Again, we go back to the machine translation task. So the state of the art machine translation task, what they do is in order to encode, find, they first find the embedding of each of the words in this context of, uh, in a high dimensional space and then combine them in, in order to find the embedding of the context. Once you have the embedding for the context, you can then, then use that embedding in order, to find, in, in order to find the predicted word. We use something similar in CST. In this case, our context is a set of traces along with the acquisition geometries. We find an embedding for each of these traces independently in the high dimensional space. And then we combine them via a simple operation such as sum or average in order to find the embedding for the context. As you can see, this, 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 this computation is not affected by the acquisition geometry or by the number of traces in the context. Once you have the embedding for a context, you can then use it to predict, uh, use it in any downstream task like predicting velocity models or predicting subsurface models. So to summarize the advantages of SESTI is that now we have an auxiliary task for which we can efficiently train a model and use it to efficiently uh, predict certain uh, all the velocity blocks. Secondly, SESTI model is robust to irregular acquisition and varying amount of information in the context, which is exactly the two points that we, that we pointed out earlier. And thirdly, for once we have an aux, a function for the auxiliary task, we can then use this function uh, across the entire survey area and use that to predict the entire subsurface image quite efficiently. So the, the second takeaway here is that seismic data ingestion problem is similar to NLP and probably not computer vision problems as what the current research is going in, in that direction. And with SSD, we can achieve an efficient data-driven system for large-scale, highly irregular data. Now, in order to discuss the results, I invite Zhao Zhao to present the initial experiments that we have on SST. Now we introduce the experiment results on, on a data set of Gulf of Mexico. We demonstrate that the prediction on the left and the ground truth on the right. The ground truth is generated from 10 months of geophysics effort. Sestil successfully reduced the duration to 5 minutes model inference with 10 hours of model training. Now we elaborate more details on this experiment. The prediction area is obtained from a large velocity map in Gulf of Mexico. After discretization, the target cubes with width 6, 6 km and height 2 km become a 3D matrix with shape 17 by 300 by 100. Then, we split the large matrix into small cubes with shape 17 by 20 by 100. We random sample 30% of the cubes for training and the inference on the whole area. For each cube, we collect corresponding source receiver pairs on the surface. In this way, we could generate data label pairs for supervised learning. Here we introduce the model architecture. We first generate trace and acquisition geometry embedding separately. Then we align them through a MLP network to generate the context representation. Finally, we use the context representation to predict velocities. 
we take full 5D information of the data into roughly 1 billion parameter network. And this model can scale up to 60 or 70. Here is the prediction results for small velocity cubes. We also provide inference results in cross-section prediction. To compare Sestil with UNET, we also introduce Sexalt benchmark. Here, we present the prediction of Sestil versus UNET. It is shown that Sestil could better capture the salt body information. The SAC-SOT dataset contains real velocity matrix in 2D. There are 130 training samples and 10 testing samples. We follow the literature and generate row shots by uniform acquisition geometry. The final shape of shots are 29 by 301 by 2000. We also introduce rs sac -SOT a simulation with real acquisition geometry. For each source, we uniformly subsample a subset of range of receivers and then collect the trace data. The sample rate is from 50% to 90%. Let's revisit the visualization results. We can see that a steel with 50% subsample could achieve better results than units. This indicates both scalability and robustness of SSD in real scenarios. Another interesting observation we find out is that by subsampling, we can generate exponential many training examples as we are selecting subset from Trace's power set. Moreover, it could prevent overfitting as SSIM is keep increasing. We also present evaluation by standard matrix. We observe that first, SESDIA in both 50% subsample and full subsample would outperform units in at least two matrix. Second, SESDIA achieves promising results in the Gulf of Mexico dataset. Thus, we conclude that SASTIA is an efficient raw seismic data ingestion approach that achieves promising results without imaging and convolution.